Uh, John Thomas, 1621 Chadwick Drive, uh, Kent. And uh, I'm here along with a few other uh, uh, folks in uh, the, from the southeast Kent neighborhood that comprises approximately 14 streets. Uh, and it was bordered by Chadwick on the east, uh, South Lincoln, South Water on the uh, west, uh, Malloy Road on the south, and uh, probably School Street on the uh, north. And what I'm here to address briefly is the concept that's been discussed called an intergenerational village. Uh, we were notified this about this uh, a few weeks back. The university hosted a meeting at the rec center on October 27th that was attended by approximately 25 to 30 individuals. We ourselves held a neighborhood meeting last Thursday in this room, and part of the product of that meeting is the list you see there. What I'm here to address at this point of the concept of the redevelopment of the general area where the married, Allerton Married Students Apartments are, is that there has been, as we, uh, some of us know now, more of us, a city university committee I believe uh, the city's representatives are uh, the city manager, uh, the community development director, and possibly one other uh, administrator. I, I'm not aware of the representation from the university. I know their side, and I don't like to use the word side, it sounds adversarial at this point, is headed up by Vice President Doug Pearson who is the Director of Facilities and uh, whatever else the title says. There's no engagement on the city side of this committee at this point from elected representatives. Uh, I think we would like to see that as a community slash neighborhood. And quite frankly, since we're neighbors with the university and they're part of this community, and I've always thought them to be, I think they made a serious left step out of the box by not including elected representatives, certainly at least one of the council at large representatives, the ward representative, Mr. Turner, who's been very helpful at this early point of this uh, discussion, and quite frankly, the university needs the input and the uh, neighborhood needs to have representation on that city university community. We want to be a good neighbor of the university. In fact, my property abut, uh, abuts the university property, or I should say public land owned by us under the stewardship of the Board of Trustees of Kent State. This is public land. This is not private land for development. And I think the council has a moral obligation to make sure one, two, or three of its own elected representatives are added to this city university committee and further that neighbors who are neighbors of the university also be added to this committee as early as possible. From what I understand from the current timeline, the Board of Trustees will act tentatively at their March meeting to award a uh, intent to proceed with one of the three submittees. And that's not that far away, at least from us neighbors on the other side of the proverbial fence. We just need more engagement. We're not talking now about being adversarial. We're talking about being included in this. This is going to be, if it goes from concept to actuality, and I've had experience with things like this. One was over 30 years ago, and Jerry is the other person that had experience in this council with this. 
called the DeBartolo Mall, also known as <laughs> University Town Center Mall. I was humbled by that process, and it opened my eyes, and I saw at times how I was wrong with some of the decisions that were made along the way. And we have basically within this part of the uh, community the same type of potential. And I always thought if the council and the administration in the mid to late 80s had engaged the community earlier and made them an inclusive part of the discussion, it might have come out somewhat differently, regardless of where you stood at any point in time. So what I'm asking here is not a demand. It's a request that you get more engaged with this potential, potential development. I know, having discussed with the coordinator or uh, with the director Suzel, there's no, e not even schematics. And these three proposals are being put together now. But I also know, you know, sometimes you can have the uh, two-minute egg and you can leapfrog from concept to, well, here we are. And I don't think we want a runaway train. I think we want to be put on the train to go along for the ride and to collaborate. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. We're collaborating and communicating here and I think the university realizes at this point early on the error of their omission by beginning off the launch pad without some key players and agents on their committee. I apologize for going over three minutes. I let you. Council President. <laughs> and I thank you and I appreciate it. I might add that the last time City Manager Ruller and I talked he helped me out back in June of 2013. He helped our neighborhood out of an issue, and Jerry might recall that too. And uh, what I recall you saying, Mr. Roller, to me on the phone, that you had driven at that point in time in June of 13 through our neighborhood, and I can't say exactly what adjectives you used, but you were impressed by our neighborhood. And I don't want to go away from the mic without saying, I am on the PMH board, PMHA board. Everyone is entitled to live and have a roof over their heads. They have a right to that, regardless of whether it's top shelf, middle shelf, or bottom shelf abode. I just want to see some logic and inclusion put into the development of whatever is about to unfold. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you. If any of you have written your concerns written, the clerk would take them for the minutes of accuracy. Next. Mr. Eric Nichols. <clears throat> Name and address, and we'll try and limit it to three, I understand. Sure. Yeah. Uh, my name is Eric Nichols. I live at 1560 Chadwick. Uh, it's at the end of the cul-de-sac, sort of butting up against where Allerton Road and the property meet. Um, I agree with John on every one of the points that he made about looking for some more discussion on this. It seems to be moving pretty quick. Um, I know our neighborhood was notified approximately 23 hours before the meeting with a slip in the door. My kids let me know that somebody dropped something off. It was about 6 o'clock in the evening. <laughs> so it definitely feels like a left hook, and it looks and smells and seems as a for-profit scheme with private developers. We're talking about private land. Um, I do think that there's a better approach if we're going to build a 1,000 people um, apartment complex in terms of that should probably be sold if it's possible, the land. The developers should take that to the zoning committee. This should be voted on. Um, a full study should be done in the costs. Allerton Road is like driving on the moon as it is. Um, there's a lot of things that haven't been considered. I've heard that this is part of the city's master plan, but there's also a large apartment complex going in down at the corner on um, Water Street and 261, um, which also has us concerned about the neighborhood. And when you look at 
the absolute sprawl of people that you're looking at when you put two apartment complexes in. Um, Kent State seems to just be going about it. Look how pretty our drawings are. Let's move forward with this project. Doesn't seem to work so well when the city of Kent, the police, the fire, the water, the sewer, the electric, and everything is affected. So long story short, it doesn't affect just me or my neighbors or John or Wendy or anybody. It affects you, 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 and you, and every single person that lives around here very deeply for a long time, um, very concerned about what it's going to take once these thousand people move in. How much uh, are we going to have to raise for schools? How can they find enough teachers to accommodate that? Um, lots and lots of concerns that go beyond whether the structure fits the building code, whether it's a good idea that's part of some master plan somewhere. Um, but we definitely beg for more discussion as a community um, with your representation as our elected city council um, to do a make a decision on this that is right for the city of Kent. Uh, we understand and recognize that Kent State is an integral part of the city, but I will also challenge you that there is uh, hundreds of thousands of cities in this country that do not have a university that are able to function just fine. And I do think that the city of Kent needs to look at the independence of the city versus the university and how this all works together. Um, I know that there's a battle right now about a t-shirt shop, whether or not they're allowed to have Kent State colors because Kent has its own identity. But in the meantime, Kent State can go and put in a thousand person apartment complex and <laughs> the city has nothing to say about that. I think it's laughable and I think we need to focus our efforts on what really matters here. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Wendy Uzik. Hello, my name is Wendy Uzik. Um, I attended the meeting at Kent State. I, I attended the meeting at um, Kent State Wellness Center for the Intergenerational Village and um, kind of sat there in awe. Uh, most of the questions were not answered, the concerned citizens presented questions and the answers were basically, we don't know, we don't know. And I kind of walked away from there really concerned and I decided to pass out some flyers and see which neighbors are interested. 32 people showed up and my phone hasn't stopped ringing since. Um, in the one hour meeting that we had on November 11th, 40 points came up. Uh, everything from uh, traffic and lighting to noise to schools to environmental concerns, the woods um, to the south, I think, of the Allerton, um, the old Allerton, is it to the south? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, the ones that run behind Chadwick area. Yeah. Um, we also showed some aerial pictures that showed um, from the 1950s the town of Kent when it was all farmland. And in those aerial pictures, you could clearly see that that forest was intact. When Kent State was asked about that forest, they said it will be up to the developer. And their attitude kind of came across to me as if they were going to wash their hands and whatever the developer decides is what they would do. Um, those are very mature trees. It's not your normal little backyard woods. Um, I think that it should be taken into consideration. There are wetlands, there are all sorts of species and trees that are hundreds of years old in that area and it should be up to the developer. For me, that's not an answer. I think that the community needs to be taken into consideration and I'm here to ask for representation from our elect elected officials because you guys are important to us and we hope that we're important to you because we are the intergenerational village, the original one. We're homeowners, we are people. I'm on my fifth child that is going to Kent State. Um, people that not only work for Kent State or are previously employed by Kent State or have kids. So the term intergenerational village actually represents what we have in our community that we share with that area that they're talking about um, developing and it affects us 
it really does affect us. So if you have some time to maybe look at some of the issues that were written up on the board, I would really appreciate it. And um, I would like to see um, some of Kent people on the steering committee and some of these questions addressed because 32 people came out and another you know, dozen phone calls since then and it, my phone hasn't stopped. So they had 20 people and we have concerned citizens. So thank you for your time. I hope I haven't gone over three minutes and thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Council members, comments? Mr. Sedoni? <clears throat> yeah, I, first of all, um, Robin, thank you for holding this meeting. I, I don't know that any of us on council were aware of it. I know I wasn't aware of it on November 11th. Was anyone else invited to the community meeting on the intergenerational? Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I, I feel bad about it. I could have been here. I, uh, I, I found out at the last minute, but I had another engagement, so I yeah, couldn't do it. Uh, I, didn't, uh, I think that these are the types of things that, that we all need to be uh, aware of and hopefully uh, be part of. And, and secondly, well, I, <laughs> I don't want anything else on my plate right now. Uh, Dave, I would be more than willing to, if the university, you know, is open to having a uh, council person, I'd be willing. I have a little more time than a lot of the people on council, so I would be more than willing to act as uh, someone to speak on behalf of the community members. Any other comments? Mr. Turner? Yeah, uh, first off, I wanted to uh, extend a thank you to Wendy and some of the other uh, community members and people in that uh, neighborhood area for taking initiative to uh, speak up of, regarding their concern. Additionally, I want to thank uh, our city manager. I had a uh, lengthy conversation with him uh, today regarding the issue, and, and also while I'm on it, uh, Heidi, uh, who stepped up and uh, was one of the individuals who helped us get out to get information out to the residents. I, I to be blunt about it, I don't think if Heidi hadn't really pushed it that that would have occurred. Mm -hmm. So uh, kudos to her mm -hmm. and to Randy, her husband. Our conversation, my conversation with David uh, was, uh, I think, uh, very productive. Uh, there were, uh, I mean, I, I think issues of uh, uh, concern that were expressed on in some areas, but I think we both came to an agreement that we were speaking from the same page and that the university was also on that page. We don't want to draw too much distance, especially at this juncture where there's nothing really on the table. Our hope is that we do the educational component, that we ensure participation for the people in the neighborhood, that uh, we have, uh, uh, I mean, at, at the end of the day, the things that Dave and I talked about were understanding our limitations as a city. Mm -hmm. There are some things we can't do, uh, that that authority lies outside our bounds but that we can't advocate for. And that is the thing that we're going to try and ensure. At the end of the day, who knows? But I think that there's no reason to question that we want to represent your interest to the degree that we can. And uh, we're going to do that. Um, there are going to be differences. I mean, there are in any situation like the one we're confronting regarding this. There are a lot of positives to the issue of an intergenerational vision. village. You stated it, Wendy, when you said you're a member of an intergenerational village. I never even really thought of that, but you actually hit it right on the head. And uh, so we're basically mimicking things. There are things that we can do that I think uh, with this possibility, if we get your participation early on and that we're able to actually then start moving forward. No guarantee from our part, 
We don't have control over the university other than jawboning and advocating. But understand, we do represent you. Mm -hmm. And I think we understand that. Mm -hmm. And I think all of us do. And if we don't, hit us over the head. <laughs> Let us know that you understand it and that we better understand it. So congratulations. I hope that you continue to do what you're doing. But please, I've said this before, and I think in our conversation with Dave, let's not uh, put ourselves in a situation where we're being adversarial, unnecessarily. There are opportunities here as well. Let's really look toward that, and our hope is that we will uh, we'll be able to find uh, a you know, silver lining in some of the aspects that may be a little cloudy. So uh, let's take it from there. I'm glad to hear Roger and some of the others. And like I said, Heidi's been on this before I was, and uh, we we'll, and, and the mayor. Uh, for being available, and all the other councils. Mm -hmm. We're going to be there for you, and uh, hopefully this will be something that uh, we'll all be proud of at the end of the day. Whether or not it comes to fruition, the interaction and the opportunity exists, let's uh, move forward and take advantage of it. Dan? Heidi? Yeah, that's well stated, Robin. I just wanted to reiterate that, you know, we were concerned that it's very difficult to get information out into the community. There are very few uh, methods for that. Um, but the university, um, the, the people at, from the university that were there did take um, contact information from the people that were at that meeting. I hope that we can continue to build a contact list. However, I do want to say that uh, Robin and I felt citizen engagement was really important, including, especially including the neighborhoods that would be near the project, but also across the city because there are, there are people that are really interested in being a part of this project, possibly, um, you know, making sure that it turns out to be a really great project with minimal um, minimal negatives to the, the community. So I, I think that we have learned over the years that when we have engaged citizens that we do better projects. And I think that I'm, you know, I'm, we, that's what we're all hoping for when the developer is selected and that we can get moving on um, discussion about the actual project versus a, we don't know, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, one more thing, Mr. Oh, go ahead. I, I would say that uh, intergenerational mm -hmm. village, it really what we would like to see is it integrated into the whole community. It becomes part of the fabric of their community. Mm -hmm. And for that to happen, I think that when there is uh, potential conflict, I think that there are opportunities, like Robin said, that we can turn those con potential conflicts into opportunities that both sides are going to be happy about, whether it be the university and uh, the community or the neighborhood that lives there, the neighborhood members. I think, I think there's opportunities here all around to build a better relationship with Kent State University. Uh, to me, that's, that's critical. Further from anyone? 